Jesus mighty name amen 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 and amen and amen amen this is the day the Lord has made and uh, we're gonna rejoice and be glad in it let's have a word of prayer Heavenly Father in Jesus name we are grateful to you for this brand new day you have given unto us have your way in this broadcast Holy Spirit you are in charge and in control bless your people all over the world make an impression concerning them and take hold of their lives even as they seek you in Jesus name Amen Amen and Amen well welcome to you the broadcast of faith moment again this is the day the Lord has made Kojo it is good to know you are alive and well come on pinch yourself and make sure you are still breathing <laughs> All right, this is the time to stir up your faith and kill your doubt. Let the doubt of anything concerning your life be killed in Jesus' name and let the faith of God come on, lift up your holy, your most holy faith in God. This is Faith Moment, the platform where we bring you the Word of God to inspire you to increase you in your understanding in the things of God. And I um, want you to uh, please do me a favor. Um, talk somebody, share this with somebody, invite a friend, everybody, let them know that Faith Moment with, um, my name is Patrick Quino, bringing you the Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God, the Word that you cannot change, the Word you can't add anything to it or take anything from it. The Word has been our security. The Word has been our surety. The Word has been our strength. The word has been all that we need to live, move, and have our being. And so we thank God for giving us the word. We're still talking out to you about the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, let me just reemphasize this, that you it's not enough to be a Christian. It not, it's just not enough to say, I am a Christian without the Holy Spirit. What gives you the authority and the power for you to um, live the Christian life is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you you are just living, you know, with, with the, the, the being part of the family as a Christian, but with, without any authority, without any power. Are you listening? And so we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, we we'll, uh, bringing um, you to one or two scriptures uh, for you to um, see what um, we're talking about concerning the Holy Spirit. First, we have uh, understand that uh, we are no longer in that old covenant, in that old dispensation with God. We are in this new dispensation or in the new covenant where Jesus uh, came to um, fulfill for us what we could not uh, our our side of the bargain concerning um, uh, the covenant we had with God with with God so Jesus came to fulfill it and he he said that when he came uh, in in the in the book of uh, Matthew the fifth chapter the 17th verse he said I didn't come to destroy that of of the old I came to fulfill it for you um, and so we thank him for that and um, bringing us now into this new covenant, into this new agreement with God. In this new agreement, it is about what he has done for us and uh, our um, side of it or, um, is to receive, believe it and receive it. And then he also have to depart from the earth, from, uh, uh, the earth but uh, he promised us that is not going to leave us uh, without any help. And so he's going to send the helper by the name of the Holy Spirit. And um, in who we have now, we have the Holy Spirit with us now. The Holy Spirit is with us. And, um, and so it is very important for you to know that as a child of God, and if you are not a child of God, if you have not given your life to 
Jesus and made him your Lord and Savior, you will have the opportunity today to do that and then come into the family um, of God, okay? And then begin to enjoy the, the, uh, the dis dispensation of grace with understanding. Are you listening? So we thank God for all that he has done for us. So we've been talking about now the person of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we've seen, see, um, you know, series of, um, um, of messages. We've heard a series of messages concerning him, and we are still talking to him. Uh, it, it may sound like, uh, well, Reverend, I'm not hearing the message of faith. Beloved, <laughs> um, this is faith. How do you, how do you not how, experience the, the work of the Holy Spirit? and um and uh, live in faith how do you not first of all you must understand what is here kumari god bless you happy independence to you in india happy independence kumari happy independence say hello to everyone for for us over here all right say hello to your 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 brother uh ravi prakash runjali i haven't heard from him he was in um, he was in uh, my place and i didn't see him Say hello to your husband as well. So we've been talking, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, about the Holy Spirit. So um, again, we've been dealing with the Holy Spirit concerning the dispensation in which we live in as to the covenant, the new covenant, or the Bible said the better, the better covenant, all right, that we have with him. All right, praise the Lord to you again, Kumari. Now, I title today's message, Be Careful with the Holy Spirit. Be careful with the Holy Spirit. Now that we're talking about the Holy Spirit because He's here with us, and for those who have um, received Him, why? Because He does not force Himself on anybody. For, so those who have received Him, uh, you also have to be careful with Him. And for those who think that uh, you can do things in the name of the Holy Spirit, and not sincerely have a relationship with him be very careful extremely be very careful because uh, he doesn't joke <laughs> are you listening to me he don't joke he don't joke i mean jesus all right came to mercifully do the work that you couldn't do and to bring you into this dispensation now that holy spirit has come he's come to uh, make sure that your destiny your future and all that which God has, con uh, you know, concern you, uh, is fulfilled if you are receiving. And so it's very important for you to understand that. All right, Mislane, Mislane, the 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 bishop's wife, Mislane. God bless you. All right. So it's very important that you understand who the Holy Spirit is, and not joke with them. And so I titled today's message with all um, sincerity and honesty and truthfulness. Please don't mess with the Holy Spirit. Don't mess with him. All right? Don't mess with him. It's either, it's, listen, it's better off you don't receive him, invite him into your life. Okay? Or, but it is extremely important for you to invite him into your life. Because to say you are a Christian without the Holy Spirit, you, you are not empowered to do the things, you know, that um, you supposed to be doing. And then you leave everything to somebody or some specific people that you think that they are the only people, you know, who are supposed to do the work of God. No, you are to do the work of God. You are to go out and make disciples and heal the sick and, uh, you know, raise the dead and all that. It's not for specific people. All right, in the old dispensation, um, a, you know, the Holy Spirit was, was sent to specific people, selected people that God chose to do what he wants to do to bring glory to his name. All right, uh, and to bring all the attention to him. Now, we are living in the, in the times that the Holy Spirit um, is available for everyone who believes um, in him and in the finished work. Uh, of Jesus Christ and the one who sent him. Are you listening? So, um, again, please do not, you know, mess with the Holy Spirit because he is no joke. Now, I'm going to, we're going to look at some scriptures here in this New Testament. Okay, not in the old, in the new, for which you and I are part of it. 
as a New Testament believers, you can joke with the Holy Spirit. And so we will see that those who attempted to do that, what happened to them. And um, remember, the reason is Jesus says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will, be, he will dwell with you and be in you forever. Forever. So the Holy Spirit is here. Now, I don't know what kind of teachings you are receiving, but I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is still here. And so, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to understand that. So maybe, maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know or maybe you are receiving some other gospel, but I want you to know that this is the gospel of truth, that the Holy Spirit, He's still alive here now in this dispensation of time. So don't, don't get that twisted, that the Holy Spirit, you know, encountered those in the past and uh, uh, we are living under grace. And, and do you understand the grace without the Holy Spirit? Do you understand the grace without the Holy Spirit? Or what kind of teachings are you getting about the grace, this dispensation of grace without the Holy Spirit? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And so you got to be very careful. Like if, you, if you are hearing all messages of grace without the Holy Spirit, run away from that, that place. Without the Holy Spirit? Are you kidding me? And so it's very important for you to understand. So, so we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and uh, you want to talk about grace and all that that is all good and well okay so uh, let's look at why you got to be very careful with the Holy Spirit okay let's look at that okay uh, in the early church after you know we see that um, Jesus um, um, told the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit before they go out and start preaching the gospel and what have you they did all assembled in Jerusalem the Holy Spirit came upon them. After that, they started, you know, they, they spread out going to do the work of of uh, of Jesus. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Peter and John, you know, went into uh, now, God bless you, and uh, started preaching the gospel and all that. So I want to start from um, the early church, all right? The early church. And uh, if you can uh, go with me now to Acts chapter 4. Uh, verse 32, we want to see something quickly and then jump to chapter 5 because I, again, I'm talking to you about you being careful of the Holy Spirit. Be very careful. Blessed afternoon to you, my dear. Um, now, all right, be careful with the Holy Spirit. Allison, Allison, God bless you. Come on, let's get into the Word right now. Please do me a favor. All right, tag your friends, tag your friends share this um, broadcast right now good morning allison again tag your friends all right invite somebody and uh let's all get part of the word okay verse 32 hebrew uh, i was just about to say hebrews maybe holy spirit something is in hebrews we'll get there <laughs> acts chapter 4 verse 32 glory be to god thank you holy spirit ah uh, okay i'll go there Verse 32, now the multitude of those who believed, okay, verse 32 of Acts chapter 4. Allison, God bless you, let me wave at you. Now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace, and great grace was upon all, was upon all of them. Was upon all of them. Nor there, nor was there anyone among them who lacked anything. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at apostles' feet. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated the son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. He was a Levite, the country of Cyprus. Uh, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at apostles' feet. So this was in the early church. This was what was happening. All right, it was very beautiful. Uh, you know, just distributing their wealth 
you know, among themselves. So that no, there was no lack. There was no lack in anybody's life. There was no lack in anybody's life. Do you see that these days? Do you see that these days? Hmm. That's a question to you. There was no lack. Now, chapter 5 is what I want to talk to you about today. Among other areas, we're going to be looking at some scriptures. Again, I entitled today's segment, Be Careful of the Holy Spirit. Now, chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at Apostle's feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for which you is for you? While it remain, while the land remain, was it not your own? And after all, it was sold. Was it not in your own control? Why have you deceived? Why have you, sorry, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing those words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife also came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together with your husband to test the spirit of the Lord. Look, the feet of those who have buried, buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. They will carry you out also. Then immediately she fell down at, his, at uh, Peter's feet and um, breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead, carried her out, bury her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Great fear came upon the church. Be very careful of the Holy Spirit. The church. The church. You see, the fear didn't come upon everybody outside the church this is the church great fear came upon the church now you realize that it was it was it was it was a moment very very interesting very nice beautiful moment that everybody was was um sharing you know selling their possessions those who have lands who have houses Whatever they had, they were share, they were selling to just and then bringing the proceeds and laying it at the feet of the apostles so that uh, everybody can can get something. All right, some of us in the office of an apostles, that's what we do. That's what we do. We don't keep what we have to ourselves alone. We don't do that. I mean. Um, <laughs> Joyce always says that, man, I don't know about your ministry. It's about you always giving and people coming to ask you. And, and how about people giving to you? I don't see the way people give to other preachers or pastors and all that. Well, I guess, I guess in the office of an apostle is what you give. I guess so. <laughs> because what happened here, look at that. What happened here is that they sold what they had brought it and put it at the feet of the apostles, okay, so that there will be no lack among anybody. And you realize that, look at this guy by the name of, um, of uh, Joseph. Joseph was a Levite. A Levite even sold what he had 
and brought it and um, distributed it, you know, to everybody. So there was no lack in the church. There was no, watch this now, there was no lack in the church. There was, I mean, everybody was, was, was being filled. Apostle, Apostle Alan, God bless you. We're talking about the work of the apostles. The apostles were not, were not seen as, 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 you know, flamboyantly rich people. They were always given. Okay. And so they sold it and brought it. They brought the proceeds and laid it at the apostles feet and distributed it. So, so the apostles make sure that everybody had something. I mean, this was the early church. It was beautiful. Very, it was beautiful. So that there was no lack, nobody lack in the church. I am, I am titling this message, Be Careful of the Holy Spirit. Church, be very careful of the Holy Spirit. Be very careful. Now, we see that what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, husband and wife, brought fear to the church what happened everybody was selling you know i mean it, it was nobody was forced to do anything beloved this is what i i keep repeating if you have to be forced to give to god it's it's it that that is not god that is not god asking you to do it if you are if you have to be coerced if you have to be you know tricked if you have to be you know use all manner of things to just to give you and also also with this mentality that i used to be there myself that you you know you give to god and 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 god will bless you and beloved this is nonsense it is nonsense god does not need uh, don't twist the the, the spiritual principles to what God can do for you without your permission. Are you listening to me? Don't twist it. If you cannot well, you know, div I mean, divide the word of, of God, okay? Don't twist it. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding of what you don't understand. Are you listening to me? Now, let me ask you something. With all the sins you were committing and all that, did you did you pay anything to God to give to God for Him to send Jesus Christ to to share His blood and wipe away your sins? Did you give God anything? Where did we get this this mentality that you 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 listen? So when it comes to giving to God, again I always tell the church, your giving to God does not make God any richer. Than rather positioning you, okay, for God to know that, see how much you love him. For God so loved the world, including you, that he loved, he created you, that he gave his only begotten son. To bring you back to the banqueting table, because he, you, you were not able to fulfill your part of the covenant. So don't get this thing twisted. So when it comes to the it comes to giving, if anybody has to coerce you or force you or or you know trick you to to give, that that is you are not pleasing God, beloved. You are not. Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, a cheerful, not a fearful giver. God loves a cheerful giver, and so if you are if you are if put if fear is put in you. That if you don't give, God will not bless you. That is of the devil. Now, if God can... Listen, do you think God is not able to bless without your permission, without your help? God can so bless the daylight out, out of you, you wonder what happened to you. Some, I mean, <laughs> my sister was saying uh, to one of her daughters uh, that... Um, uh, hey, you, God is going to bless you and your, <clears throat> your husband based on a, 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 a whatever that uh, people would think that you've gone, you've gone to see some malam. Yes, and I knew where she was. I knew where she was coming from. Beloved, God can so bless the daylights so out of you without your permission. Are you listening to me? He's God. He, he, he. <laughs> let me, let me just stay on there. So anyway, they brought the proceeds, the church, and it was beautiful. Now, the husband and wife 
sow their possessions, okay? If you are not giving all to God, then, hey. And so they decided to keep part of the proceeds. They decided to keep part of the proceeds. But you see, the Holy Spirit, who was who is, is seriously operating through Peter, you see that guy who denied Jesus at the point of the need of Jesus that he needed Peter to say, yes, I know him and, and all that. When Peter denied him, of course, Jesus knew that and told Peter and Peter was even arguing with Jesus. You see that guy, now he is now full of the Holy Spirit. You don't mess with somebody full of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday I told you, find somebody whom you know is full of the Holy Spirit and get closer because... You know, even when they open their mouth to talk to you, you, I mean, you can receive that impartation. Are you listening? And so Peter was full of the Holy Spirit. And Peter caught this by the Spirit that these people have lied. They have lied. So look at what happened. And Peter um, <clears throat> said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself why have you have you allowed satan to do that to fill your heart instead of allowing the holy spirit to fill you you have allowed satan to fill you last night i was uh, just discussing some things with joyce and i said um i think i i, I can say this that god there's no vacuum there's no vacuum in between. If if the spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not in you, then Satan is in you. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't know because I, you tell me what else is in you. Because there's nothing like vacuum. I remember when I was in school that they 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 taught us um, they say air air occupies space. You see the space, you know this space you don't see. A physical building or a tree or something there's something occupying it and I believe so it is in us it's either the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Satan because on 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 this earth in on this earth there are two people who are operating you are you are set that's what Jesus said you can't serve two masters you can't you either serve one or reject one. You can't serve two masters. So it's either you are serving God or you are serving the devil. And so if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, then you fill with the, with, with the Spirit of God. But look at this. He says, why have you let, allow, allow, why have you allow Satan to fill your heart? The other persons of the church, have allowed Holy Spirit to fill them. So they were excited. Oh, glory be to God. They were excited to do, to just, you, you see when it comes to giving, this is what I'm, I'm telling you, beloved. When it comes to giving in mass, you, you got to be excited about you, the opportunity you have to give to God. It's exciting. It, it, it is not about how fat your giving is though, beloved. It's about what is coming out of your heart. And listen to the scripture. God loves a cheerful giver. You can give a million dollars, but if it's if it's something you are you are scared of or you are you are you are ticked off, you know that you know the church is asking for money and that they always asking for money and all that. How do you think you going? I mean, you you're going to please God with that? God ain't pleased with your giving. I believe there are some a lots of givings. God said God is not pleased with them. Because it's not coming from a cheerful heart. It's not coming from a cheerful heart. Remember when Jesus, uh, you know, everybody was giving in the, in the, in the church, in the synagogue. And this, um, you know, woman, a widow, gave it the little mite. You know, we, today is known as uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the widow's mite. And Jesus looked at everybody giving, you know, putting all these fat things. And Jesus says, watch this woman. Her name will be recorded every time the gospel is preached. Her name will be mentioned. Not the people who were giving fat things because in their hearts, they were probably giving, not being excited about giving to God. They were giving 
with a religious spirit. They were given from a religious spirit. Beloved, your giving must be an exciting thing. Whether you are giving to a man or a woman of God, whether you are giving to support the work of God. I mean, right now, I have, I have, we've put um, 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 a request on the platform on social media, you know, that uh, we're asking everybody to support us to be able to buy this equipment. It's a, it's a media equipment, it's a software and other, you know, um, equipment so that we can broadcast this uh, message of God to every corner of this world. And we've put it there. Now, whether you give or not give, it's, it's in your hands. But I want your giving, beloved, to be a giving that is coming out of your heart because you want to support the work of God. I'm not going to waste time and energy in telling you all manner of things on the face of this earth for you to give. Like somebody's pressing you. You know, every time you see, you know, my face, it's, it's about, oh, he's coming to talk about money. Listen, the devil has tricked you with this mindset. Okay, that when you are giving to God, even sincerely, is going to the to the pocket of uh, uh, somebody to you know to 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 spend the money. No, no. Well, not in this ministry. Not in this ministry. I remember some. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. Anyway, so the 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 the, the question was Ananias, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? Look at everybody was given very beautifully so that every, there's no lack. There's no lack. Look at the question that Peter asked. While these things was in your hands, was it not yours? Was it yours? Are you listening? This is your own possession. This is your own. It's your own. It's your own. Did somebody force you to do that? And, and again, see, this is it. If you want to, if you are giving and you are giving out of a religious spirit, beloved, sometimes you hear people saying, man, I've given all these years, I don't see anything. I've given to the church all these years. I'm not. Yeah, you know, you need to check your giving because you probably, you know, you've been probably given out of a religious spirit. Not out of uh, your, you know, your love for God for which... You know, God sees your cheerfulness in your giving to Him. Because you, you are concerned, you are giving, and your mind, your, you know, Satan is also putting this in your mind that look at you. You are, you are, giving, you are put, giving your money to, for, to, for, the, for the preacher to go and, and spend. I mean, <laughs> and so then you pull yourself back. Look at, look at that. And I believe this, was, this is what was going on here. That was he, everybody was giving cheerfully, Ananias and his wife. They sold their possession and then they held back some of the proceeds. And uh, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, caught this thing and, and came to Ananias. Ananias, why have you allowed Satan to fill your heart, to lie to the Holy Spirit? You've lied to the Holy Spirit. You have not lied to man. Watch this now. You have not lied. Look at verse 4 of uh, Acts chapter, chapter 5. While it remained, Peter says, <clears throat> excuse me, while it, this remained, was it not your own? And after all, it was sold. You sold it. Was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? What thing did he conceive in his heart? He conceived in his heart that the giving, his giving, was, to, is, was going into the hands of the preacher and the preacher is going to you know, spend the money. His, his, his mind was not that I am giving to God. His mind was not. So Peter says, 
Why have you let Satan fill your heart? While your possession was your possession is in your hands, did anybody force you? The money is in your, it's your money. Did anybody force you? Why is everybody giving in the church here freely so that they bring everything to the apostles feet and then there was apostles sharing from everybody every, there was so that there's no lack in the church why have you lied to the holy spirit kept back of what you sold you didn't lie to look watch this and he says he says why have you not have you conceived this thing in your heart you have not lied to men but to god you have not lied to men. You have lied to God. All right? Beloved, if your giving is not cheerful from your heart to God, then it's not given. Yes, you can give religiously. Religiously. Because everybody's doing it. If you don't do, if you don't you know, participate, you know, you look awkward and all that, so you give. But you have no understanding as to why you are giving. That's why you are complaining. Well, Pastor, all I have given and given, given all these years. You don't see anything. Bishop, Bishop, God bless you. The other day, was it last week or two weeks ago, Bishop, <clears throat> Bishop, um, a good friend of mine, he's on a platform now, um, um, Archie Jones, uh, said that um, we give, we give not, I say, he says we give, Bishop, correct me. Can you correct me? Ever? But it's all about we, we do it and not expect anything back. We do it. Beloved, like I said, my, you know, Joyce was, 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 even yesterday, even yesterday, I received a, a messenger, you know, from a group of people who was to go to some village and <clears throat> with the gospel and all that. And they are coming to me that their budget is not enough. And if I could support them financially to meet their budget. As an apostle, I am constantly giving. I mean, I cannot equate that which I have received from what I have given. I can equate it. it the, the, scale, the scale would definitely not match. Definitely not match. Definitely not match. Most of the time, if I'm even asking, I ask from my brothers who are, you know, my colleagues. Like Bishop Archie Jones. Ask him, he will tell you. Those are the people I will ask. I say, hey. Ruben, listen, can you spare, you know, a million dollars? Glory be to God. <laughs> All right. The church, people? No. See, this meant, see, my, my background is in business. And I had this thing at the back of my mind. That God, make sure you, 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 you sustain me and bless me. Because I don't have the patience in going out there in this pulpit and on the church. And having church members think that, I have, I'm coming to enrich myself because of their two dollars in their pocket. I don't have patience for that nonsense. I'm going to tell you off, you probably will stop being a Christian. I'm telling you. Because some of us, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. And so, and so, look at the situation here. This is your own possession. Why, who, was anybody forcing you to give? And if that was your position, position, then you are not sincerely giving to God. Beloved, your giving to God must be because of your love for Him. Give to God and know, you know, see, if you, if you sincerely give to God, there's no way you allow the devil, there won't be no room for the devil to come and play with your mind that uh, where you're giving, you are giving to the man of God or the woman of God to go and spend the money. Who cares? I gave it to God. That is who I know I gave it to. I didn't give it to the man. I didn't give it to the woman of God. I gave it to God. I'm giving to God. If my giving, if God, watch this now. If God, Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver, then your giving to God must be so cheerful. God, I mean, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll come to that, that day of, of, of talking about giving. But I, I believe in this same, in this same contest of this message, 
I, I don't know, Holy Spirit has kept me here <clears throat> for a minute or two. And I'm talking about be careful of the Holy Spirit. Be careful of the Holy Spirit. You see that because of what he did, how did anybody know that he has kept back of the money? How did anybody know? Because it belongs to him. But the Holy Spirit, being in Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Peter called Ananias and said, Ananias, why have you done this? Do you think you were lying to men by bringing the proceeds or bringing what you have determined to label it as what you sold? This is what you are bringing. All right? You are bringing what for every for people to think this is this is what you sold and you bring, and you've kept back of back some of it. Why have you allowed Satan to 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 uh, to lie to you to fill your heart? You didn't lie to men. You lied to the Holy Spirit. Bible says that immediately he heard that he fell. He breathed his last. Now, did Peter kill him? No. His own, his own performance. Kill him. You lying to the Holy Spirit? Hey! Church, let's be careful. Lying to the Holy Spirit? Be careful. It's better you don't. You see, it, it reminds me of um, Ecclesiastics chapter 5. When you get time, please write it down and go and check it. Ecclesiastics. Ecclesia stands for the church. And it talks about when you go to church, don't be in a haste, okay, to, to vow and to give. I, I have stopped taking pledges in church. I, I, don't, I don't take pledge, no. I, I think most of the time, I came to the place of um, getting this understanding that most of the time, um, um, the, the, the pastors or the preachers, all right, we, we, we lead, okay, people on to, you know, for them to be messed up. Go and read it. You'll see, you understand what I'm talking about. So when you come to church, all right, don't be in a haste to say things, the Bible says. Don't be in a haste. Now, so he lied to the Holy Spirit. Now, his wife, his wife, Sapphira, or Sapphira, knowing this, knowing this, this, this is the opposite of, uh, of the woman doing it first and the man also doing, and that of uh, 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 Eve eating it first and giving it to the man. This time it was the man. <laughs> And the woman also came. Knowing it, the woman also knowing it, when she came back about two hours or so later, Peter asked him, I said, asked her, says, uh, hey, wife, do you know, did you people sell all this, you know, what you are, and you kept back? And she says, yes. So said, why did you do that? Well, the man who carried your husband away, when he found out that the Holy Spirit is, has caught him, he died, he's dead. The men who carried him to go and bury him, they buried him without even your, your notice. <laughs> Can you imagine that? They've buried your husband. You, you don't even know. They've buried your husband. Now, who knows? Probably, she, you know, part of the money they kept back, you know, was given to her, like, hey, you go and do some, you know, shopping for us. <laughs> because I'm wondering, where was she? That she's coming back two hours or so later. Where was she? Where was she? So she came back and said, so you see the man who just go went and buried your husband without you being around. They're right behind the door. Bible says that she breathed her last also. Fell and died. She, she fell at, a, at apostles' feet. Peter's feet and died. And they carry her and bury her next to the husband. Beloved, God, be very careful. You're talking about lying to the Holy Spirit? You, you might as well not. Don't. Ah. And this fear came 
Let me read that side to you. Verse 11. So great fear came upon all the church. Underline all the church. And upon all who heard these things. Great fear came. There's no fear in the church anymore because the Holy Spirit ain't operating. Hey, did I just say that? There's no fear in the church because the Holy Spirit is not operating. If the Holy Spirit is there, listen, you don't mess with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to see some scriptures also, again, talking in the same line about being careful about the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, go with me to uh, the book of, um, turn to Acts. Okay, we just left Acts chapter 5. Now go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Now we see that Paul, thank you now, we see Paul has, um, um, you know, um, uh, met, you know, Jesus on the way to Damascus, you know, and had an encounter with him and, um, you know, come to the place of receiving him and, um, Receiving the baptism and all that. And we see that. <laughs> now they're preaching the gospel. Paul is preaching the gospel everywhere and, and all that. Some of them, some people don't even believe him, you know, that kind of stuff. Of course, why would they be believing? Because he was somebody who was persecuting the church. And all of a sudden, you come in talking about the same Jesus that we confessing about, that you were killing us and all that. So, yeah, it took a minute, but of course, the Holy Spirit have to come you know, just bring, you know, the, the sincerity of him and all that to the people for them to know that indeed, yes, um, he was. Now, so there was scattered all over the place. If you come to um, um, chapter 8 of Acts, okay, they were scattered all over the place. Look at verse 4. Let me read from verse 4 down. Verse 4 down said, Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Okay, they were scattered everywhere preaching the word, and I'm talking about it. This what this you know started from uh, from Jerusalem when the, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, and everybody was there, and all that. They were scattered all over the place, and uh, <clears throat> Paul uh, gets persecuted by the church, you know, and, and he persecuted the church, but he got his you know his calling as well. So uh, come to verse five. Of the chapter 8 down the Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them like I said everybody scattered preaching the gospel all over the place all right and the multitude with one accord he that the thing spoken by Philip hearing and seeing the miracles which he did the multitude with one accord you see that when it comes to the church if there's not there's no there's no accord acc accordance <laughs> is that a good English? All right, I did it. I just spoke it. But you understand me, right? If they were not in one accord, like we saw, we just saw that that they were in one accord, and for that reason, they were even selling their positions and bringing it with all that. Husband and wife, Sapphire and um, Ananias and Sapphire, they lied and they got their re their reward by the Holy Spirit. They thought they could joke with the Holy Spirit. Well. So anyway, there's scatter here and everywhere and all that. Now, they were clean, you know, cleansing. Uh, verse 7 says, For unclean spirits crying out, uh, coming out of the people, and uh, who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame also received their healing. And there, there was a great joy in that city. There was a great joy in that city of all that wonderful things the Holy Spirit was doing through Philip and all these people concerning the gospel. I mean, I mean, it's, is it not exciting? Beloved, when the Holy Spirit is at work, it's exciting. If there's a, if, if there's a strife in the church and all these persecutions going on against the church and all that, I think the church, we should check ourselves. Have we, have the Holy Spirit left us? Has the Holy because when all these persecutions and all these troubles and all these problems and all this come, I'm telling you, I'm taking some serious inventory. I, I am not, I am not in haste anymore to do anything concerning church without hearing the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? 
I don't know about you. <clears throat> Today I'm talking about be careful with the Holy Spirit and um, concerning the church. Now, and so there's a great joy that, you know, was happening in that city. And uh, verse 9 says, but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Okay, so this is another guy who was previously doing that. Now, whether he has left it or not, but as we read along, you see that um, he came to be baptized. He came to be baptized. <laughs> um, he came to be baptized when he saw the people baptized and all that. But watch this from verse 14 down for the sake of time. Please take your time and read this. And when the apostles who were at Jerusalem also heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent for Peter and John to come. They sent for Peter and John to come. Samaria has now received the gospel and was exciting. I mean, all over the place, people were celebrating. People were excited about, about the gospel. So they sent um, uh, Peter uh, to come. Remember, Peter was first in Jerusalem. That's where the Holy Spirit came upon them. Verse 15 says, Who then um, they had come, when they had come down, they prayed for them uh, and that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? They came and prayed for the people that they will also receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, um, the Holy Spirit has not fallen or has not come upon them. They, verse, that's verse 16. And they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Peter and John lay hands on them. They received the Holy Spirit. Now verse 18. Watch this now. Now when Simon, that, that old guy, the guy who used to practice sorcery, saw that through the Holy Spirit, I mean through the laying of, of, uh, of the hands of the apostles, okay, apostles, um, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. He offered them money that he wants to, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. He wants to buy the Holy Spirit. He wants to buy the Holy Spirit too. He offered them money um, so that, um, 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 and saying that, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive uh, the Holy Spirit. Now, this guy has been baptized, but he was, I believe, was just going along with what, what everybody was doing, religiously, not with spiritual understanding. Beloved, there's a bunch of people sitting in the church with no understanding of where they are because everybody's doing it so they have to like uh, I, I used to say this that every, you know you see people going to church so you also go to church uh, because if you if especially on Sundays if you don't go you you are the one they're going to point fingers fingers at that you are the you are the demon in the house and so you also go to church but beloved going to church with no understanding you might as well stay home <laughs> This is what I mean by giving with no understanding, with, with giving without your, your love for God. Don't, don't do it. You are waste. You listen, by the end of the day, you'll be saying that the preacher has taken your money to eat it because you gave to the preacher. You didn't give it to God. If you sincerely gave to God, trust me, your mind would not even go there. And who cares if you are giving to God and the preacher is is chopping the money like the, you know the Ghanaians they will say chopping the money? Is that your business? You give it to God. It's up to him. Anyway, let me come back here. So, watch this now. He gave them money that he may also receive this power, the power, also that anyone on whom. I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, if he is not, he, if he has not received the Holy Spirit, how can he then lay hands on anybody to receive the Holy Spirit? You see the difference here? So when he saw the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, as Peter, as, uh, Peter and John were, 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 was, were doing, and the people were receiving that of the power of the Holy Spirit, probably was being slain under the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit and all that. 
it reminded him of his old self and thought that uh, he could buy. It's something that he can buy. Watch what Peter said to him. Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Beloved, you see when it comes to money, don't think that every preacher is interested in your money. I don't know, especially when it comes to true apostles. Are you listening? This is why, you know, these days I've come down, I'm growing, I've come down a little bit. I will, I will cash you out with your money. I, I, you know, some people, as you say, I'm too proud and all that because I don't need your money. I'll go do business and make money. How much you have? That you put a little dime in there and you think that, uh, you know, and then you want to even come and ask questions as to what is the church doing with your money and all that. I'd rather do business and make money so that this way I have my own authority to just curse you up. I'm telling you, God knows. I mean, so when it comes to, when it comes to that, some of the true apostles that, and I'm sitting down here and I don't receive. I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I was, you know, let me just go on. Sometimes this thing just get a, a bit annoying. Are you listening? He said, let your money perish with you. Peter says, let your money perish with you. Now, you understand that Peter is no longer fishing by preaching the gospel. And so if somebody who was in business know how to work and make money is now in the gospel, preaching the gospel and and all that. Don't you think that Peter is relying on God to take care of him? The one who has truly called him. And you think you can come and, and, and entice him with money. Peter didn't buy the Holy Spirit. Beloved, it, it's, it's, not, it's not about money. Look, some of us have seen money. That little money that is challenging right now and all that. It's, it's, just wait. Just give us a little time. All right? So anyway, he says, give, give this power. Let me give you money. But Peter said to you, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart. You see that place again? Your heart, your heart, your heart. God loves a cheerful giver. Your heart is full. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. Ananias and Sapphire died as a result of what was in their heart. And Peter is telling this Simon, the old sorcerer, that for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you, may be forgiven you. Now, when a man full of the Holy Spirit is telling you something like this, like Peter, same Peter, you know, um, uh, spoke to Ananias. Remember, Ananias and Sapphira had already been spoken to by Peter and they're there. And I believe this sorcerer heard about it. And so listen to what he says. Verse 30, uh, 23, he says, for, uh, uh, Peter says, For I see that you are, you are poisoned by the bitterness and bound by iniquity. Look at verse 24. Then, then Simon answered and said to, to Peter, Pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness. You will talk true. You will talk true. Pray for me that none of these things you have spoken may come upon me. Yes, because when it comes to People who are filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't mess with them. Be careful about the Holy Spirit. Be very careful. Be very careful. When we, I, last week I believe as I, I taught you, spoke to you about testing all spirit. And whoever you are dealing with, whether it's your preacher, your pastor, your whoever, name them, all those titles, you know, everybody give themselves. Test all spirit, the scripture says, in the book of John, I, be, I believe it's John 4. Test all spirit. Which spirit is operating through who? Test them. And so when you know that the, the person who 
you are dealing with is full of the Holy Spirit, you better be careful. Don't, you don't, the Holy Spirit don't joke. He does not joke. Test all spirit, he says. Now, he says, Simon the sorcerer says, please pray for me that all that has come out of you, remember the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what was in the heart of Peter? Phil of the Holy Spirit has spoken. So please pray that all that has come out of you will not come upon me. He says, will not come upon me. Will not come upon me. Huh. Be careful with the Holy Spirit. Do you hear what I said? Be careful with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13. Let's see more scriptures here. Acts 13. Oh, my time is up. Oh, my goodness. Let me leave you. My time is up. I'm sticking with, with this one hour. My time is up. My time is up. <laughs> I'll continue tomorrow. Yeah, I'll continue tomorrow. Acts, Acts 13, go and read it there and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. From We'll pick it out from there. All right? Beloved, if you don't know Jesus, that's the first step. For you to have the Holy Spirit, like I told this Muslim boy, for you to have the Holy Spirit, you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In this dispensation of this new covenant, you cannot have the Holy Spirit without Jesus Christ. No, you cannot. Anybody give you any other gospel, tell them they, they're lying. Are you listening to me? You cannot have the Holy Spirit. In that Old Testament, you didn't, you, you didn't just have the Holy Spirit either. It was not given to all. This new covenant, you can have the Holy Spirit. It's, it's for everyone who receives him. By receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is the entry point. Without Jesus, no Holy Spirit. For I'm telling you, yes. Who sent the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Then I'll send you another comforter. I'll send you another, another helper when I leave. So the Holy Spirit came as a result of the promise from God through Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus, you are not. So give your life to Jesus right now. And then be baptized in the Holy Spirit to receive him. That's a gift. But you don't, you have to position yourself to receive it. So if you don't know Jesus right now, let me lead you to him faithfully and sincerely. You don't, don't think that you can come in, okay? And um, like, like this, you know, Simon guy did. I, I, I believe that he, he just came in just to be baptized, but he has his own mindset that, you know, because this is a new trend that is going on, let me position myself so that I can, I, I, I don't become redundant of what I used to do that people see me as a great man and, and you know, and, and all that. And so he came in. But you, you just can't fool the Holy Spirit. Ananias and Sapphire thought they could fool the Holy Spirit and uh, they got what they, they wanted to get. Be careful of the Holy Spirit. So let me lead you, whoever you are, if you want to do that right now, it's your choice. But that would be the best decision you have ever taken in your life to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Beloved, when He comes and He's coming, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, He's not coming for your sins anymore according to Scripture. He's coming for your salvation. And so you receive Him and have your salvation today that when He appears in the class of glory, you will go with Him. Are you listening? So if you are that person, let's do that right now, right now, right now. Just lift up your, your, your hands with your eyes closed and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Yes, indeed, I am a sinner and I see myself as a sinner. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take full control of me right now. Possess me. No, none of me anymore, but all of you. And baptize me in the Holy Spirit that I may walk with you, talk with you, and be led by you anymore and not my old ways. I thank you and I believe that you have heard me and received me. Write my name in your book. 
Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer, sincerely, you have received the Holy Spirit. You have received, you know, the Lord Jesus. All right. If you pray that prayer sincerely, you have. All right. And um, so where do, we, where do you start? Well, first find yourself a Bible if you don't have one. Because you, the Holy Spirit will talk to you through the Word. The Holy Spirit works through the Word of God. Are you listening to me? Prophecies, whatever, visions, and all those things, they come, they are through the Word. If they don't match with the Word of God, it's not of God. Are you listening? And so get yourself a Bible. Well, I do, where do I start reading? Look for the, 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 the book that says Proverbs, all right, and start reading. Or the Holy Spirit will lead you as to where to start. Are you listening to me? So start reading that and um, um, start going. Now, maybe you don't have a church, like we were talking about a church, a place where you feel the love of God and, and um, the Holy Spirit is in operation there. Find yourself a Bible teaching church, all right? It's a, it, listen, we, we're living in a time that you need some teaching. When you have understanding about the Word, it's no longer about, you know, somebody saying some nice things to tickle your funny and get your emotions all stirred up and all that. And by the end of the day, you lack understanding. The devil is not interested. He doesn't get scared about you going to church. He's concerned about children of God who have understanding of the Word of God. Because he can quote you a scripture, but if you don't have understanding of the Word, you will fall for all kinds of nonsense from him. Are you listening? And so find yourself a Bible teaching church and uh, position yourself there. Introduce yourself to the leadership and let them know you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're born again and you want to grow. In the meantime, join me this and every morning. Okay, um, bring you more teachings of the word that will bless you. Go to the website. Go to the website of this ministry, www.patrickquenoministries.com. All right, and um, also the Facebook is um, Patrick Queno Ministries. Patrick Queno Ministries. Um, get more of this uh, messages. It will be, it will bless you. It's blessing me. Listen, I'm not only teaching you or preaching to you. I teach myself and preach to myself. Are you listening? So I'm excited when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I'm just excited. You know what? You know how fear, you know, got out of me? The whole, through the Holy Spirit. I used to be afraid of certain things. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some of you, you know, you didn't know that. I am. But right now, I, I, I don't think the lion is the only bold animal. First of all, the lion is not the king of the jungle. Some of you will believe all that hype. I'll show you another animal that the lion is afraid of. All right? So it's not anyway. So go to the face, uh, Facebook and get some of these messages. It will bless you. All right? And be a blessing. All right? Like I said, we want to increase our technology, okay, um, through this um, uh, ministry. And so we've put it out there, okay? I've, I don't, didn't used to do that, but... Well, I'm listening also. So allow other people to also be part of this ministry and be a blessing to them. Uh, God will bless you as well by sowing into this ministry. We want to get this software and this equipment, all right, to, uh, for it's a media, media broadcast equipment that we can <clears throat> expand the gospel. You realize that I've been on just the Facebook alone um, for the past, you know, two weeks or so. Why? Because... Um, that system is not working and we need to get it back and expand it okay so i need your financial contribution and support to do that good when you go to the website you will see www.patrickquenuministries.com you see a button that says donate click it and um the rest uh you'll be led as to what you you can do if you want to send it through um, um cash up Use this number plus one nine one four five seven two nine eight one six. So, until the same time, please do me a favor share this broadcast. All right, share it, tag your friends and uh, loved ones, they will be blessed as well.
and let's get the truth word of God and be blessed. Same time tomorrow, prepare to increase your knowledge and understanding. Be inspired by the word of God, even as we talk about the Holy Spirit and uh, his assignment on this earth now. <clears throat> I want you to know you don't have no trouble. Enjoy your day. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding.